Hi, I'm Paul the Happy Gilder. Welcome to my channel. In this video, I'm going to cover a basic process of creating text along a vector path. I'll start with a preset vector shape, then move on to creating basic vector paths using the pen tool. But before I get into that, if you're a fan of Victorian techniques, gold leaf, glass art, reverse painting, digital techniques, and much more, then you're in the right place because that's all this channel's about. And I usually release a video every week. Also, if you'd like to support the channel, there's a link to my Patreon in the description. I reward my patrons every month with a different vector design. There's also a link to my Instagram, my Etsy shop, and the Happy Gilder Facebook group, which is growing by the week. Before I move on, just wanted to mention within the group, one of my followers, Ted, has created a formula for glue chipping. If you saw my last video, you'll notice that my basic math is terrible and I can't figure out this sort of thing. So he's created a spreadsheet where you can put in the size of your glass and it will calculate how much glue you need to cover that area. So anyway, that out of the way, let's crack on with the vid. Right, so for the first time in any of my videos, I'm going to start in Adobe Illustrator. The reason I'm not doing this in Photoshop is path tools, anything vector based, and also the text tools. They've got so many more options in Illustrator, so it's better to do it in here. There are ways of doing these things in Photoshop, but maybe not of achieving all of the results you can achieve through Illustrator. So I'll start with something very basic, and that is down the left hand side here is our tool palette. And I've got this on just the default settings. This is probably how it will appear to you if you've just installed Illustrator. But what I want to do here is just change this setting here to typography. Got layers open, although layers are a little bit different in Illustrator than they are in Photoshop, so I might not be using those today. So the first thing I'm going to do is just create a very basic kind of circular border, and then within that circular border have some text going around the outside. I think that's the easiest place to start. So I'm going to go to my shape tool, hold it down, and go to the ellipse. If I click and drag, you can see a few things. Firstly, that that is filled with black, and secondly, that it kind of warps the aspect ratio as I drag it around. If I just suddenly click the shift key, that's going to snap that to a perfect circle, and that's what I want. So let go of shift and let go of the button. Just going to drag this to the center. Now, where Illustrator is a little bit different to Photoshop is that in the left bottom corner here on your tool palette, in Photoshop, this is foreground color and background color. In Illustrator, this is fill and stroke. So you can swap these around like that so that it's now got a black stroke and nothing filling it. Or you can do it on this top menu here. So what I want to do first, and this was a question that was asked to me in, in the week in the Facebook group, and I'd kind of figured out how to do it, so I thought I'd post that in here and add a few little extra bits to it and add some text. So I want to create my circular border. And what I want for that is a circle, then a slightly finer circle, so that there's a kind of holding line within it, then our space, fine circle, a thicker circle, and then we'll create the text within it. So at the moment, I'm going to do this a little bit bigger than I normally would, just because it just makes it clearer for the demonstration purposes, but I'm not doing this to make it so it looks perfect. Now this stroke, we have options here. This, if I zoom in up the top, is stroking the center of this path, and I want it to stroke the inside. So if I go to Window, Stroke, that brings up our options here, and it's this align setting here. So that's central. I'm just going to click here, and that'll move that to the inside. And I'll just minimize that. I don't think I'll need that anymore. So what I now want to do is create multiple strokes coming down to create this shape. And how I do that is I'm going to go to Window, Appearance. And this is kind of like a layers palette in Photoshop where what I've got here is my stroke, but what I can also do is duplicate this by dragging it down here. So now I've got a stroke on top of a stroke. And what I want to do with the one underneath it is I'm going to change this to a color that's not white for now, just so that you can see what I'm doing. So if I change this to red, and then that's at four pixels, and if I up those pixels, you'll see that red starting to creep in. So that's pretty good, that's how I want it. 
I'm now going to duplicate this one, change that back to black, and then just do that maybe three pixels. So I hope that makes sense. I can show you that a little bit better by turning some of these off. So if I turn that one off and that one off, it's just basically a nine pixel stroke topped with a seven pixel stroke, Ooh. topped with a four pixel stroke, and so on and so forth. So rather than make you watch me do this, I'm just going to repeat this process, but I'll just speed it up so you don't have to watch me just clicking around. Right, and there, really nice circular border. All of the gaps are perfectly equal at the top because of the stroke weight that I've used. And what I'm going to do is run text around this inside circle. I'm going to do go back to my shape tool, hold shift, and create a circle. Now this has actually got the same properties as the last stroke weight that I applied, which I don't want. I don't want anything on this, so I'm going to go to stroke and just switch this here which means there's nothing all this is is a circle and I can just drag this circle into position and that will snap to the center of this if you get that in place and think that needs to be a bit closer to one of the circles if you hold alt and shift you can scale that in from the outside sort of up and down so I'm gonna go something like that if you're going to be using lowercase letters, it's worth taking into account. You can align it so that the actual bottom of the lowercase letters um, align to the path, but by default it's not going to. Anything like a sort of lowercase g or a y is going to hang off the bottom of this path. So that's just the default setting, so it's worth taking into account. But I'm going to go with uppercase letters. So that is the shape. Now by default, your type tool will be selected and if you hold down the type tool there's your type on a path tool which when you hover over a path you'll see a little thing that says path pop up that's probably not that clear just because of I've set this to red so I'll just zoom in so you can see that there you go and that means when I click on this that was just typed all around that path I'm just going to go control zero to fit that on screen and you've then got the same sort of edit options as you'd have in Photoshop, like your type color, your size, your font. So if I go for something that I know is a all caps font, which is letterhead fonts old block. So this is quite a good one. And if I scale this up, I'm not going to type anything because I'm just doing this as a demo. I'm just going to scale this up and you can do that by pressing control shift and full stop. Or you can just do it with the little drop down menu here. So if I click on that, click on this, and that is how you sort of type along a path, along a very basic path of a preset shape, but, but it's really easy to do. And I just think they look really nice. If you've got a logo and you can put one of these sort of borders around with a nice sort of Victorian font, it's just a really nice, you know, design element. Another thing is if you save this as a PDF or an AI file, this will go directly into Vinyl Master without you having to vectorize it because everything on here is a vector. So started off with a really easy one, but moving on now, going to look at creating a path to type along, which is a little bit more difficult because you've got to get used to quite an awkward tool. So I'm just going to delete this, press control zero to fit it on the screen. Now, that tool that I'm going to introduce you to now is called the pen tool and you can access it by pressing P or it's this one on the taskbar here on the toolbar sorry now when you first use this it's going to be strange because every, everything kind of works backwards so if I just click a point that's the start of our path it's showing us where the neck where that's going to go and if I click here this is me drawing a path. Let's just reset that so that there's no fill. That's good. Now 
this is all right if you've got right angles and just straight lines, but a lot of the time you're not going to have that. You're going to have curves. And the way to achieve these kind of curved paths is a little bit weird to start with, but once you get the hang of it, it's easy. So if I click my point, then instead of just clicking here, I'm going to click and drag. Now I'm holding on to this at the moment. So as I'm dragging this out, it's pulling in the opposite direction and creating a curve. When you first do this, it's very likely you're going to be all over the place with this and, and sort of wondering how, how you're ever going to get used to it. But if you hold the shift key, this will snap to increments of 45 degrees, 90 degrees. But for now, let's just get used to how this actually works. So if I just let go now, that is the start of my path. And what this is showing me here is how this path will continue if I'm to just click here, for example. How you can manipulate that is by this little handle here. The handle is determining how much of the path is going to curve relative to the curve you've just drawn. If you didn't want to do that, if you wanted to go straight up from the path you've just drawn, you can hover over this point here and press the Alt, hold the Alt key and just click on it. And then you can just draw a path upwards or at whatever angle. But if you wanted something like a smooth line to type along, like what you would do is see where this is going, click and drag, And potentially that's the start of something. Now, I would ordinarily trace along something, and this is a, a bit of a rubbish path. But any of these can be manipulated. So if I hold the control key, I can move this section of the path, and I can also manipulate the curve handles. If I hold the control key and click, that finishes that path, and then I can just reselect that. And I can type along that exactly the same way as I typed along the edge of the circle. But with this, there's going to be a few different things to take into account that are pretty handy. So I'll go to the Type on a Path tool. Bear in mind as well, it depends what your type settings are when it comes to your page alignment. If your page alignment is set as left, so let me just come off this path and I'll show you what I mean. So this left aligned. If I start typing at the left tip of the path, that is where it will start and it will go on down the path until it, it either runs out of text or it gets to the end. So I've got it set to left aligned. I'm going to select that path, type on the path, hold it here, and that's typed along the path. The difference of doing this in Illustrator to doing it in Photoshop is you've got much more control now of how this font actually looks on this path. You probably don't want your font to be sitting like this, so that it's parallel to each curve of the path. You know, the, the most aesthetically pleasing thing would be to have all of the font sort of vertical, and then the base of the font running around that path. And there's a way to do that in here. So all you do is go to type, type on a path, type on a path options. I'm gonna set preview so I can see what these do. And all it is, is I'm going to change the rainbow to skew. That means they're now all facing upwards. The baseline thing here is what I was saying earlier about if you're using lowercase fonts. You can have it so that it's underneath the path. You can have it on top of the path, but anything that's coming down will touch it. In the centre of the path and baseline, which means that the, the body of the the main body of the text is sat on that path and if they were lowercase any tails would be hanging below it. So that's a very basic tutorial on how to apply type to paths. There are a few other things you can do and they involve the kind of transform tools. So let's just delete this and just go to standard type tool. Just going to scale this up, holding shift and dragging this. And then what we've got in here is an option to warp the text with some presets. So if I click on this, first one that comes up is arc. Now, this is pretty good as a preset. It's not as good as doing it on a, on a circle and there isn't an option. There isn't a preset for a circle, but 
you've got control over the arc similar to what we've just done by having all of the font facing upwards you can change that to arch that means you've got this nice sort of curve with everything vertical but the nicer ones are things like flag and wave because you can get these really nice kind of Victorian style shapes that you see on a lot of the old signs and yeah just really playing around with these until you get the kind of effect that you like now these kind of presets are also available in Photoshop as is the potential of typing around a circle. What you haven't got is that nice feature of being able to skew the text to all face upwards. Or if there is that option, I don't know about it. So I'd recommend using Illustrator for anything where you're going to be kind of typing along a path or creating shapes, certainly because it's, it also saves you that time. So what I can do now is just show how this can be effective on a pre-existing design. So I'll just close this and then I'll open up a vector file that we can work on and, and replace some of the text on it. So here I've got the Labelle Supreme vector file. If you saw my last video you'll recognize this one. And let's say for example you've got this file but you don't want to do the traditional design. You want to add your own font in there and your own text. So what I can do, firstly if I want it to follow this path, that's an easy thing to do by just get in my path, uh, just get in my pen tool and then just drawing out a path that roughly matches this. And again, that's got a fill on it that I don't want. So with the properties of this, I'm just going to select this path, change the fill color to nothing. And I'm going to change the stroke color to nothing as well. Oh, doesn't look like that fill color went to nothing. There you go. That's better. So now all I'm going to do is select the text. and delete it. Now I've got this nice blank space to work with and I've also got my path that I want to type along. So for this one I'm going to set my type tool to central. So now I'm just going to go to my type on a path, start it at this end, let's run this all the way along, but if I just type one letter you'll see that one letter is bang in the centre now. So it's obviously tiny but Go back to my type tool, let's select this and scale that up by pressing Control Shift and full stop. Or what's a quicker way because this is going to take a while, I'll just type that in there and make a bigger layer. So I'm going to go with a nice tall font and what I can think of is a letterhead font called LHF Athletica. And this is all caps as well, so I don't have to worry about anything hanging below the path. So I'm just going to go with the Happy Gilder. Select that. Control Shift Full Stop. Let's tap this along until it gets to where I want it. Then I'm going to go to my Type. Type on a path. Type on a path options, preview, skew. Go OK. I think I can go a little bit bigger with this. And there you go. Really simple way of replacing the text in a pre existing design. You can always then edit that in, in the stroke and fill tool. So if I wanted to just have a stroke around the outside of that. Just do that there quite easily. Yeah, and that, that's achievable across this whole design. Same with this bit across the bottom here. Draw out your path similar to where you want it. Delete the text that's there and then just type your own text in there. And yeah, that'll be it for today. So there you go. I hope that wasn't too long-winded. Um, I just wanted to try and cover all bases. I mean, it's a pretty basic process, but it's just getting used to the tools in Illustrator. 
So I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, please subscribe to the channel and click the little thumbs up icon and please share it with anyone else who you think might enjoy it. So till next time, cheers.